Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Bible lessons. Today, we're in the book of 1 Samuel, where we meet a lady with a problem. And the problem makes her very, very sad. So she prayed very, very hard because she, what she wanted was very, very important to her. Have you ever wanted something so much that you prayed and prayed? How did God answer your prayer? Did God say yes? Or did God say not yet? <laughs> or it means wait. Or did God say no? That's the way God answers prayer, isn't it? Sometimes he says yes, and sometimes no, and sometimes not yet. Well, I prayed one time for a, what I wanted, and God told me no, and I was sad. But we have to believe that God knows best, doesn't he? And, you know, lots of times I've prayed, and God said yes. And some of them I'm praying, and he's just saying not yet. How about you? Do you pray? How often should we pray? Psalm 55, 17 says, Evening and at morning and at noon will I pray. Psalm 55, 17. Well, that's pretty often. That's three times a day, isn't it? What should we pray about? 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Casting. All your care upon him, for he careth for you. We can tell God all of our cares, our worries, our concerns, because he cares about us. Yay, I'm so glad. Well, and we can call upon the Lord when we're in trouble. Psalm 50, 15 says, Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver thee. And thou shalt glorify me. It means we'll praise him and thank him. God does take care. Why is prayer so important? What exactly is prayer? Well, prayer is talking to God. So that's important. And prayer is listening to God. And prayer is turning your problems over to God. When we have a problem and we worry and then we pray and then we worry some more, that's not what we should do. Give it to the Lord. And prayer is thanking God. Oh, we forget that one so often. And this one has to do with today's lesson. Prayer can be spoken silently or out loud. Wow. God answers prayer, doesn't he? God answers prayer in the morning. God answers prayer at noon. God answers prayer in the evening. So keep your heart in tune. That means keep your sin confessed so he'll hear your prayers. Keep right with him. Well, prayer is an important thing. Well, let's get back to 1 Samuel chapter 1 and find out about how this lady gets her prayer answered. Well, the lady is Hannah, and her husband is Elkanah. And they lived a thousand years before Jesus was born. That's a long time before, huh? You know, and at first, God's people didn't go to a church like we do. No, they went to a very special place, a special tent called the Tabernacle. It was a very special place. Moses had had the people build that in the wilderness. It had shiny brass posts where that held up the linen curtain that went all the way around the tent. And it was special because underneath the layers of cloth and skins that covered the inner tent, there was a gleaming gold furniture, a golden candlestick. Do you see it? And there was the <clears throat> gold table that held special bread. It's right here. had the showbread. And there was a golden altar where sweet 
smelling incense was burned. That was right here. And then behind the curtain was the best of all, the Ark of the Covenant right here. Now that's not the Ark like Noah's Ark. No, it was a golden box with cherubim on top, angels. And inside of it, they had put some manna and they had put the Ten Commandments and they had put Aaron's rod that bloomed. And it was to represent the presence of God. You see, God promised that when his people worshiped at the Lord, that he would hear their prayers that they asked of him and they came to the tabernacle. So the tabernacle was a very important place for God's people. Well, that's right where Elkanah and his family were headed to the tabernacle because it was Passover time. And they would go from their city to Shiloh, where the tabernacle was, to worship God. It was at the um, Passover. That's when um, the death angel passed over the Jews in Egypt, the night that the firstborn child of everybody in Egypt died. Well, they would have a feast to remember that happening. Well, Hannah had no children, but Paniah had several children. The Bible says sons and daughters, so at least four, maybe more. And Elkanah loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. So the Lord had told Hannah right now, no, hadn't he? I'm trying to find my little paper plate again. He had told him no to that answer to prayer. Here it is. And <clears throat> Hopefully, that hasn't happened to you, but we have to trust God. Well, so they went, and the problem was that every year they went, it was once a year, every year they went, Paniah would torment poor Hannah, because Hannah didn't have children. The Bible says Paniah provoked her sore. It means she said unkind things to Hannah to make her fret and worry and be anxious because the Lord had shut up her womb. No children. That was awful. It was bad enough that she had that problem. But then to have someone pick on you because of it? Oh, how sad. Well, the Passover was supposed to be a happy time, but it wasn't happy for Hannah, as we can see. And she would just weep and cry and she wouldn't eat. And Elkanah asked her, Why weepest thou? And why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am not I better to thee than ten sons? He just felt bad for his wife. He didn't know what to do. Well, after the Passover meal, Hannah snuck out from the feast and went to the tabernacle to pray. And as she was praying, she did not realize that Eli, the priest, was nearby watching her. And she began to pray, and this is what she said. O oh Lord of hosts, if thou will indeed look upon the affliction, means your troubles, of thine handmaid, she calls herself the handmaid, and remember me, and not forget thine handmaid, but thou wilt give unto thy handmaid a man-child. Then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life. She's promising God that if he would give her a baby boy, she would give him back to the Lord all the days of his life to serve him. Hannah was praying so hard, she didn't see Eli, the priest, watching her. And the Bible says, that Hannah spake in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Remember our list on the prayer, what prayer is? Prayer can be spoken silently or aloud. And she was praying like this. Okay. 
Her lips were moving, but you couldn't hear her speak out loud. And you know what? It's just awful what happens next. Eli, there's Eli washing her. Eli thinks she's drunk because of the way she's praying. And he comes up to her and he says to Hannah, put away the wine from thee. Oh no, poor Hannah. <laughs> Hannah was kind of shocked and she looked back at Eli and she said, Oh no, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. She said, I'm so sad. I'm neither drunk wine nor strong drink, but I poured out my soul before the Lord. Wow. Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. The priest said that God will answer her. He's asking God, too, to answer her. Well, Hannah went back to where Elkanah was at the feast, and she wasn't sad any longer because she believed God's promises that Eli had said he would do. And she was so happy. And they, the next day, went back home. And you know what the Bible says next? After they got home, the Bible says, the Lord remembered her. Remember she said, remember me? Sometimes when we go through something sad or hard, we think the Lord's forgotten us, but he doesn't. And God blessed Hannah. The Bible says she became the mother of a little boy be boy. Wow. God answered her prayer. What did he say? He said, yes. God gave her that baby boy. God is so good, isn't he? God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. He answers prayer. He answers prayer. He answers prayer. He's so good to me. There's another song that says, What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, let's spend more time in prayer this week, shall we? Dear Lord, help us remember that we can bring our prayer requests to you. We can bring our problems to you, and we can bring our worries to you. And Lord, we remember to thank you when you answer them. Lord, help us to trust you. And Lord, I pray if there's anybody listening that has not yet asked you to be their Savior, that they would do that, that they would believe that they're a sinner and that Jesus died and was buried and rose again to forgive their sin. He shed his blood to wash it away. Lord, we pray that you would help them to be saved. And Lord, that's when you'll hear their prayers after they believed. Thank you, Lord, that you gave us a chance to talk to you. In Jesus' name, amen.